Hi children, today it's Sunday the 10th of May and it's really, really windy outside. And I've been thinking about your seeds and this gave me the idea to talk to you about something called seed dispersal. Now seed dispersal is a science word and it simply means the movement or spread of a seed from its parent plant. Now you've all got a seed and I've got a plant here which I've been growing myself and I grew it from a seed. I chopped up a pepper and I took the seed from that pepper and I planted it in some soil a few weeks ago. And as you can see, I've got a little seedling here and this one has grown so far, it's grown up into a plant and it's quite a big plant really. I'm very proud of myself and I'm hoping that in a few more weeks time it's going to continue to grow and I will have some new peppers that I can cook with. Now, the seed dispersal process that I'm going to talk to you about today is wind and that means that seeds are blown from their parent plant and spread around and then they settle somewhere and begin to grow again. And I've got a story here by a very famous author called Eric Carlyle. He wrote The Hungry Caterpillar. I'm going to share this story with you and then I've got a challenge for you at the end. There's always a challenge at the end, isn't there? So here we go. This is called The Tiny Seed by Eric Carlyle. It's autumn and a strong wind is blowing. It blows the flower seeds high in the, in the air and carries them across the land. One seed is tiny. It's smaller than any of the others and it will be able to, will it be able to keep up with the others? And where are all the seeds grow, going? Can you see? This is what happens in the autumn. The seeds blow off the trees and blow off the flowers and blow off the grass and start their journey. One of the seeds flies higher than the others. Up and up and up it flies. It flies too high and it gets burnt by the sun. But the tiny seed sails on with the others. Another seed lands on a tall and icy mountain. The ice never melts, so the seed cannot grow. The rest of the seeds fly on by. But the tiny seed does not go quite as fast as the others. There he is on the mountain. Now they fly over the ocean. One seed falls into the water and that does not grow. The others sail on in the wind, but the tiny seed doesn't go quite as high as the others. One seed drifts down onto the desert. It's hot and it's dry and the seed cannot grow. Why can't the seed grow in the desert? What do the seeds need to be able to grow? Now the tiny seed is flowing very low, but the wind pushes it on with the others. Here's the seed that fell into the desert and can't grow. Finally, the wind stops and the seeds gently fall down onto the ground. A bird comes by and eats one of the seeds. The tiny seed isn't eaten because it's too small for the bird to see. Now it's winter, and after their long trip, the seeds settle down. They look just as if they're going to sleep in the earth. The snow falls and covers them like a soft white blanket. A hungry mouse also lives in the ground and eats seeds for his lunch. But luckily, the tiny seed lies very still, and the mouse does not eat it. Now it's spring. After a few months, the snow has melted. It really is spring. The birds fly by, the sun shines, the rain falls. The seeds grow so round and full that they start to burst open. And they are not little seeds anymore. They are plants. First, they send their roots down into the earth. And then their little stems and leaves begin to grow upwards towards the sun and the air. There is another plant growing much faster than the little plants. It's a big fat weed and it takes all the sunlight and the rain away from the small new plants and some of the little plants die. The tiny seed has not begun to grow yet. Will it be too late? Hurry! But finally it starts to grow into a plant. Can you see this weed? Sometimes you hear people talk about they have to weed their garden and that means they take out those plants that suck all the moisture and stop the good plants from growing. The warm weather also brings the children out to play. Uh-oh, they've been waiting for the springtime too. 
One child does not see the plants and he runs along. Oh no, he's broken a plant and it cannot grow. We do that sometimes, don't we? We don't really look where we're going. If you tread on a plant and break it, it can't grow anymore. The tiny plant that grows from a seed is growing fast now, but its neighbours are growing even faster. Before the tiny plant has three leaves, the other plant has seven. And look, a bud, and now even a flower. You can see with my plants, can't you, that they're growing at different speeds. They were planted at the same time, but this one's really big. And this one is still just a little seedling here. But what is happening? For the first, first there are footsteps, then a big shadow looms down over them. Then a hand reaches down oh, and picks the flower. Oh no! It's a tempting to do that. We like the flowers. When we're walking from school to church, we see the daffodils and it's really tempting to pick them. But if you pick them, the flower won't be able to grow. A boy has picked a flower to give it to his friend. It is nice that he's done that. But what would happen to the seeds if we picked all the flowers and took them indoors? In the, it is summer. And now the tiny plant from the tiny seed is all alone. It grows on and on. It doesn't stop. The sun shines on it and it rains and waters it. It has many leaves. It grows taller and taller. It is taller than the people. It's taller than the trees. It's taller than the houses. And now a flower grows on it. And people come from near and far to look at the flower. It is the tallest flower they have ever seen. From that teeny tiny seed. I wonder what you're going to get from your seed. I wonder how tall your sunflowers are going to grow or how high your crest will grow. All summer long, the birds and the bees and the butterflies come visiting. They've never seen such a big or beautiful flower. And now it's autumn again and the days grow shorter and the nights grow cooler. And the wind carries the yellow and red leaves past the flower. Some of the petals drop off the giant flower and they sail along with the bright leaves over the land and down to the ground. And the wind blows harder and the flower has lost almost all of its petals and it sways and bends away from the wind, but the wind grows stronger and it shakes the flower. Once more, the wind shakes the flower, and this time the flower's seed pod pops open. Out come all the tiny seeds, and quickly they begin to float away. Can you see? We're almost back to the beginning of the story, aren't we? So this is where we began our story with the tiny seed that had popped out of a huge flower and been dispersed by the wind. Now wind is one way that seeds are dispersed and carried around on a journey until they land somewhere and then over the winter they, they go dormant, almost asleep, until spring comes and the warm sunshine and the rain causes them to start to germinate. Now, I said there was going to be a challenge. Wind is one way that seeds are dispersed from flowers, but there are other ways, and I would like you to have a research on the internet or have a read around and see if you can find what are the other ways in which seeds are dispersed? What are the ways that seeds dispersal happens? Good luck. Put your answers in the comments at the bottom of the blog. I'm really looking forward to seeing how your seeds are germinating. Keep measuring them and we'll see who can grow the tallest sunflower in our school. I'll speak to you soon, children. I look forward to your responses in the blog. Happy growing. Bye.